Um, so I was wondering if you could unpack a little bit what you mean and maybe define as evolved, um, because I'm sort of trying to grapple with all these new ideas and um, it occurred to me that if you ask, if you ask any, ask any given, ask any given, and you're going to say that they're the good guy, they're the most evolved. Um, but I wonder if by labeling certain individuals as more evolved, you run the risk of perhaps giving them a sense of moral superiority that would then sort of create a armor against them, you know, maybe um, coming to terms with ideas that don't immediately fit into their group. Um, and I'm not just talking about uh, progressivism. Um, I think that could apply to anyone who feels that they are correct, which I think is most people. So, and I guess kind of a further question from that is, can you evolve in a negative way? Because I think of evolution as positive, um, but is it possible to evolve? Yeah, that, that's, that, that's really excellent. I appreciate you asking that a lot because that's um, something that I very much should uh, make sure we have an agreement about what I mean by evolved and more evolved. Um, let me say first, let me defend the concept of more evolved and then I'll, uh, I mean, more than I just did, you know, in, the, in, in dealing with the, the charges of elitism, right, which we do get. Um, first, we want to make the world a better place, right? That, that is, the, the, the conditions in America are, are not sustainable. They're troubling, you know, that there's something wrong. I mean, people don't, even the folks on the right, people don't vote for Donald Trump who are happy. You know, there, there's, there's definitely, every worldview, I think, would agree that we're in a tough time and we want to make things better. So what does that mean? I mean, we can't flinch from the idea of better, even though, you know, the, the, this idea of better or, you know, progress, that's the central focus of modernity. So progressivism comes along and naturally attacks progress as, as because it's instinctively they sort of like you know the god of one stage becomes the devil of the next right so 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 progress is in some ways the god of modernity and so this idea that all cultures are equally evolved right we can't say you know that it's eurocentric hubris to claim that modernity is more evolved than another because they're closer to the earth and they you know they're, they're fine and i think that's true it's both in some ways everybody who is in whatever worldview they're in has a right to be who they are but in this given condition, I think we're perhaps in agreement that we want to grow, that we want to grow into a better version of ourselves. And if we're going to take that, that project of growth into something better seriously, then that leads to concepts of how do we get better, right? What is higher? I mean, so in other words, better is not an objectionable term because you can't really get away from better. But higher starts to sound more hierarchical. But, but again, better it, it, it comes back to this geometry. The geometry is, is dialectical. It's not linear. It's more of a helix or a spiral going up. So there's, you know, it's not absolutely better. It's, it's sort of better, but there's new problems that occur that didn't occur before. So even though we're getting better in some ways, we're also making things worse. But I think that, that uh, there, there are strong arguments to be made that despite the appearance of new gnarly problems, there is a net positive, and, and that's not just my value judgment, it's the value judgment of humans over the last 300 years, who, where they have a fulsome traditionalism, they're interested in modernity. When they have all the gifts of modernity, progressivism starts to become attractive. When they become frustrated as progressives that they can't get the rest of the society to buy in to environmental or social justice, then, then beginning now, many frustrated progressives are beginning to move into this post-progressive perspective that to overcome the political impetacy, which is ultimately the condition of progressivism because of its stance of antithesis, all right? So that's a, that's a mouthful. I, I, you know, I want to return to this question as during my talks. I don't want to steal all my thunder, but let me just say something more about evolved. I define evolution as the universe's ceaseless process of becoming. And, and this process began with the Big Bang, where time and space and the laws of physics begin, right? Only 3.8 billion years ago, only, only three times older than the Earth itself. It's, you know, the universe just came into built being relatively recently, and since then it's been, it's been growing, right? The periodic table of elements in the, the cosmological evolution, the elements keep getting more complex, right? Then we have the biosphere. Animals keep getting more complex. 
Then we have the, the newosphere, or this realm of human history, and, and this process of, of ceaseless becoming continues. So how can we get our, our arms around cultural evolution or historical evolution to claim that it's really part of this larger process that began with the Big Bang? Well, that's a very important subject, which I'll deal with in week you know, eight. Um, but just as a preview, I think this process of becoming is properly termed evolution. Although the word evolution is a battleground of meaning, there's not one standard definition of it. But, but if you allow the, the meaning in the realm of culture to be this, this sequence of emergences, where something more keeps coming from something less, Right? With, with modernity, as I said last week, being the kind of the Cambrian explosion, where all of a sudden the world has changed forever and the human condition is immensely improved, right? By, you know, even though there's, again, new problems, those improvements are um, almost universally appreciated, like electricity and a computer and an internet and, you know, air conditioning. The basics of modernity are what, you know, humans mostly agree, unless the folks want to go live off grid, which is perfectly fine. But but modernity improves the human condition, so we can say it's better, and in that way we can say it's more evolved and maybe even higher, but not in a particular, in a just totally vertical, linear sense. I'll ask it again now because I think it's 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 quite relevant. So, um, right with this whole framework of having sort of each uh, worldview be sort of a more evolved, more inclusive worldview, and sort of. Um, Right, calling each one, you know, in some sense, better than the one that came before it. Um, that I think, to me, presents a challenge in how you like talk about this with people who are of a lesser evolved worldview. It, it, right? It seems like uh, that you know is sort of um, a bit confrontational or a bit uh, controversial to you know s sort of tell somebody, oh, you know, your worldview is is less evolved than my worldview. Sure. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so sort of what are your thoughts on that? And, and yeah, yeah, no, excellent question. And, good, and that's, that's a very important question that, uh, you know, it doesn't have a pat answer. It's a question we struggle with. Part of it has to do with skillful means. Um, part of it also has to do with there's both, uh, you know, a, a, a whole arc. You know, there, hierarchies are often confused with dominator hierarchies, which are generally seen as bad by progressives for good reason, right? Um, but in integral philosophy, in the deeper parts of it, there, there's a, a distinction with what's called a holearchy, where, where the, as layers emerge, the, the, the newly emergent layers bring something that's significant, but they make the underlying layers more fundamental. So as values being created, it's being created in both directions, right? That every new layer makes the lower levels more valuable. So that's one element of, 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 of it. It's also important to say that there's at least partial relativity associated with the idea that each one of these worldviews are the right worldview for the life conditions, right? So if the life conditions are survival, then maybe this really, you know, selfish, you know, strategic, ruthless, pre-traditional worldview is the right worldview if you're struggling to survive. Or if you find yourself in a, in a, you know, warring tribes that are always at war, maybe the next step to heal that solution is, is a, a traditional form of civilization, right? If you're struggling in, in, a, in a stuck uh, developing country and there's this caste system where there's no mobility, maybe the best worldview is not progressivism, but, but modernity. You know, modernity is the right way to evolve out of those conditions. So these worldviews are still the leading edge. Every one of them, at least the, the main three, are still can be recognized as the leading edge of development in different countries. And, and so a, a country that's pre-traditional needs a healthy, needs to develop a healthy uh, uh, traditional level of civilization. It can't just jump to progressivism. And um, you know, that's, that's one mitigating factor. Another one is, is that every one of these worldviews, as something emerges, although we gain new capacities and, and uh, new, more inclusive horizons of value, something's also lost. Right, every you know that 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 there there as I said I think last week there's this when traditionalism is transcended, a lot of the family connections and the sense of belonging that were you know a hallmark of traditional society that these are lost and people are atomized and that creates a lot of the uh, anui or depression that many people who are in the modernist world feel they feel disconnected in many ways because of the loss of that traditional you know family structure that they once were part of. Um, 
So, so in terms of telling people, I, you know, obviously we don't, we, we, we try to use skillful means. That's part of what cultural intelligence is. Cultural intelligence is his ability to recognize that every, that, that first of all, the central ethic of all this philosophy is people have a right to be who they are, right? Claire Graves, that's his famous quote. You know, he sort of said, you know, then his quote is, damn it all, people have a right to be who they are, in the sense that, you know, people who are traditional religionists are not defective progressives, right? People who are progressives are not defective post postmoderns. you know, it's, 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 um, it's, there's a way in which each worldview has its own value independent of how it fits in this larger trajectory of evolution. And cultural intelligence is the ability to honor and even revere and metabolize the values of these other worldviews. So if you're hanging out with traditional people, like your grandparents at Thanksgiving dinner, you don't have to sort of be sitting in a worldview that you perceive as being, you know, four stages evolved above. You can be with the folks who are in the traditional worldview fully on their terms and, and, and in a way that you are able to enter into their worldview and, and participate in it and, and show them subtly, you know, with cultural intelligence, how you can revere their values even while you, uh, you know, can't buy in to their negative aspects. So, um, you know, that one of the charges against uh, this integral thinking is that it's elitist. We, we take that very seriously. We don't like to be thought of that the way we certainly don't think of ourselves as elitist or look down on these other people. It's, it's sort of this, we're trying to include, we're trying to honor and welcome more than ever before. So that's our project, which is sort of the opposite of elitism. But if you want to, um, you know, if, if, if we were to own the charge, I could say that it's an elitism to which to, to which all are welcome, right? It's not an elitism that's we're trying to exclude anybody. We're trying to, to um, recommend this perspective to anyone who finds it attractive. So those are at least some of the, uh, of the uh, excuses <laughs> that I can throw up, you know, for the, for the um, you know, the, the, the realistic and reasonable criticism that how, how can you claim to be more evolved? Well, again, we have, how, why is it more evolved? It's more inclusive. It, it has a, 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 it, it metabolizes wider values. It honors more approaches. It can preserve this structure of history more effectively than these other worldviews. So there, there, I mean, I could go on and, and maybe want to you know think about it for half an hour and come back and give you a list of all the ways that I justify this vertical dimension of development. Um, you know, truth is another one. If we just take the good, the good, the true, and the beautiful, right? If those are lines, if those are I, I call them directions of evolution. How do we know something's more evolved? Well, it's some combination of being, you know, better, more true, and, and more beautiful. So modernity is more evolved than traditionalism because it brings in scientific truth. And that you know, improves the human condition immensely. In, in regard to truth, progressivism makes an advance on modernity because modernity has this myth of the given, as it's called. This sort of idea that we just, you know, we're just perceiving the world as, as it is. And, and, and we're just finding reality, we're not making it, right? But progressivism comes along and saying, no, there's a subjective component to truth. Even the most objective scientific truth, you know, still is mediated by the, the person who's perceiving it or teaching it. And so this, this idea that, that truth has both objective and subjective elements, I mean, of course, some progressives go too far and say it's all subjective, and I reject that, but that's an integral move, right? So, so the, the, the move to truth, of the line of truth as a direction of evolution, I think, we get to a higher level of truth when we transcend progressivism because we can be begin to appreciate how each one of these worldviews has a piece of the enduring truth that we haven't just completely left behind.